Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can take an image, make it 3D inside of DaVinci Resolve, and then to rotate it around as a 3D object. So you can see in my timeline here that I've already dropped in a PNG image into my timeline. So the PNG image is just the Resolve logo, and of course everything around it is transparent. So the only relevant parts of this image becomes the logo itself. Now, if we go take a look at the inspector for the image on the timeline, you'll notice that there's only 2D controls here. There is a rotation here, but it is only 2D, so that is not going to work for our purposes. So in order to take this logo and turn it 3D, we're going to need to go over to the Fusion tab. So the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve allows you to create your own 3D effects and titles. Being able to create objects on the screen and light them very similar to programs such as Blender or Maya, but in a little more limited capacity. So what we need to do with this media import and media output is take the original 2D image and turn it into a 3D plane, and then rotate that around and light up the 3D object, because once you turn it into a plane, it's 3D and then it needs a light. So if we right click in the node section and go to add tool, 3D is where we're going to find a lot of the little nodes we need. So the first one we're going to need is Image Plane 3D. So you'll notice that there are these little knobs here for inputs and outputs coming in from different and leaving two different sources. So the idea of nodes is that you connect them in order to create more complicated effects. So the first connection we're going to want to make is taking the media input and connecting that to the Image Plane 3D. So this takes our image and makes it 3D. Now you can't exactly see that yet because we're not showing that in one of the viewports. So if we right click on this node, we can go to view on and left view, and then we'll actually be able to see the image as it is in this node in 3D. So under these viewports, what you may notice is that there is a timeline of frames. So it's basically the same thing as looking at one clip in the edit tab. And we can animate an object on one of these nodes in much the same way that you can on the edit tab when you're animating a clip with keyframes. So I'm still selecting the image plane 3D and there is a new tab over here in the inspector called transform. So if we go to transform, you'll notice that there's X rotation, Y rotation and Z rotation. Using these, we can create a 3D rotation. So I'm going to start off by setting keyframes for X, Y, and Z rotation at the first frame of this clip. And you can move in the clip timeline by dragging it around up there. And then for a very simple rotation, we just need to go pick a point probably at the end of this little animation. And then to put in new values, which will automatically set a new keyframe. So wherever these diamonds light up red, you have a keyframe. So let's say uh, we want to have a Y rotation. So we can do that. And you'll notice it can go above 360 degrees. That's because you can have it rotate more than once in a certain direction. So if you want it to rotate twice on the Y axis, then you would put in 720. That's 360 degrees or a full rotation, but twice. Now notice that you can do an X rotation, a Y rotation, or a Z rotation all at the same time. So I can also change these numbers here to 720 and 720, which is going to mean it's spinning on the Y axis, the X axis and the Z axis simultaneously. And now as we go along these frames, you should see the image rotating in 3D. Really, it's not just an image we're looking at now, but a 3D plane. And of course, the areas of the PNG, which had no data, the transparency data, those are still being filtered out. So this gives us a rotation and uh, we can play that back if we choose. So hitting play there, you can see it's a little choppy because it's rendering in real time. Uh, don't worry though, when you actually export it, it will look totally fine. So in this simple example, we're going to need one more node, which is a renderer 3D. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool 3D and then renderer 3D. And that will allow the image plane, which you can see exists here in this 3D space similar to a modeling program, um, can actually be rendered out to a format that's usable by the video. So I'm going to connect the image plane to the renderer 3D, and then we need to disconnect media in one and media out one so that we can have renderer 3D actually output to the media output. So I'm going to click on this arrow here, 
to disconnect it. And then I'm gonna connect Renderer 3D to the media output. And if we go somewhere in here on the timeline, we should be able to see what the final result is going to look at, which is the image spinning. Now, at this image plane 3D stage, it is actually a 3D object. But once it gets rendered and outputted, it's once again just a series of 2D images. So that's what video is. So now we can go to the edit tab and actually see if this has updated. Uh, just view it normally in the regular timeline. So I'm going to go to the start here. I'm going to hit play. It may render kind of choppy. We would expect that because this is a 3D effect that needs to be fully rendered and exported. The best way to kind of make sure that everything looks nice if it hasn't fully rendered by this blue bar up here is to kind of just go check out some individual frames and see if everything's looking right but once it's a uh, blue bar at the top you should be able to play it back with decent speed so it looks like that is spinning properly and we would be able to go ahead and export that so we might as well do that i will i will make this a exported video add it to the queue publish it and once it's done we can go ahead and open it up hit play and it should play back as we would expect so I've been Chris, this has been a basic tutorial into how to turn an image into a 3D object so that you can rotate it inside of DaVinci Resolve 15 or manipulate it however else you want. I hope that this Fusion tutorial has been helpful for you guys and I will see you guys in my future video content.